Gold at Cumtor is now mined by an open pit mining method. In 2006, estimates were verified of gold reserves to be mined only by an underground mining method. Amid rising gold prices, construction of an underground mine was found economically reasonable. To gain access to the ore, the company in 2007 began construction of... No, not shafts, but ramps, or rather declines, as they are known here. As experts explain, shafts are vertical, while the declines at Cumtor are inclined 9 degrees. Hence their name, Decline. According to the design, underground mining will be carried out by means of two declines. The declines are being built on both sides and they're expected to meet underground at the depth of 300 meters. As in the open pit, the basic underground mining operations include blasting. The blasters planted 170 kilograms of explosives today. Explosives like this occur every day. For lack of national experts qualified in decline advancements in such extreme conditions, these operations involve expert specialists. Comtor employs the most cutting-edge technologies that exist in the world today. This applies not only to advancement technologies themselves, but also to safety standards. This applies not only to advancement technologies themselves, but also to safety standards. Comptor has a very efficient safety service. To begin with, no one will be permitted to work unbriefed or untrained in safety requirements. We were able to see how great importance is attached at Comptor to safety when we arrived at decline number one. We were met there by Daniel Kasumaliev, a safety engineer. He was to show us around decline number one, which at that moment had advanced 620 meters. But first of all, I'll have to brief you as we normally do any other visitors here. First of all, we employ identification badges. It's very important and you should know about it. As a visitor, you get two cards that are displayed on this stand. Next, you'll exchange one card for a self-rescuer and the other for a flashlight. Your flashlight should correspond to the card number of the cell in which you got your self-rescuer. What are these cards used for? We need them for registration of all persons who go below ground. In an accident, we will know every person who is underground and will be able to take relevant action. Now I'd like to show you what kind of hard hats are used by the workers in the descent. Unlike ordinary hard hats, they have sloped sides that effectively protect the workers' heads against falling rocks. In addition, the hard hat has a fixture for a flashlight and its cord. As for the belt, it has two additional straps that are necessary for fixation of the self-rescuer and flashlight. Also, it has safety arrangements you may need in the event of working at a height. You will have additional safety belt fixtures. And here's a very interesting thing. These are safety boots that have metal inserts. Now let me tell you about the MSA 3100 self-rescuer, which you can use in an emergency. Whenever you see a fire or detect toxic gases, you will have to use this device. First of all, you will have to place it in the middle. It has so-called fixing clips. You disconnect them, and the upper lid will fall. Next, the device itself will be disconnected. This part will stay on your belt. You will hang out your neck belt and use this mouthpiece. Make two breaths using this, let's say, nose piece. And then you will have to go to the nearest shelter chamber. 
Исследуйте ближайшую камеру убежища. After such a detailed briefing and several necessary procedures, we are ready to descend. In front of the entrance to the decline, you see warning signs governing underground operations. The decline slope being rather small, only 9 degrees, everybody travels here by vehicles. For lack of space, there is only one lane here. That's why the maximum speed here is limited to only 15 kilometers per hour. The decline workers normally travel by vehicles as well. Whether they walk, they are required to keep to the right. What if you meet a vehicle? What should you do in such event? In such an event, you should stop and establish visual contact. You can do this by means of your flashlight. The vehicle will stop, making way for you to pass by. After that, the vehicle will go on. It's very noisy in the decline because of the working indirect heating systems buried in the wall under special coating. These indirect heaters keep a fixed temperature between 2 and 26 degrees above zero. A permafrost environment is kept by spraying concrete on the wire netting. This is one of the decline's peculiar features at Kumtor. Keeping a permafrost environment is necessary to avoid soil crumbling. From time to time, you can see recesses in the walls here. What is it, Dania? It's a safety recess. It can be used by the personnel as a shelter in an emergency. Can they come into it now? Yes, they can. They can escape into it an accident. As you see, it has a curtain that makes it possible to seal this recess hermetically. What protective means does it contain? Let's come into it and see. First of all, you can see fresh air supply. Next, we have an eye washing station, a first aid kit, a burn kit. Also, the recess contains a so-called action plan, an emergency and a fire extinguisher. How many people can save their lives in a recess like this? About seven people, I guess. In other words, it's designed for seven people, right? Approximately so. Seven at the most, right? Seven people can find refuge in a fire if it, God forbids, breaks out, right? Okay, let's go on. All right, Sasha, I would like to call your attention to these light reflecting poles. They are used to mark various areas. In this case, they signal that this is a safety recess. The mobile shelter chambers, which are available in each decline and are unique for Kyrgyzstan, are really the pride of Kuntur. They are arranged in safety recesses close to the areas where people work. Each of them can accommodate 10 to 12 people. Means of communication, fresh water, oxygen, foods, toilet equipment and medicines are available inside them. In such a chamber, workers can stay for days waiting for help. These chambers cost more than 1 million US dollars each. But the company's commitment to safety requires that the declines be equipped with chambers like this. What makes operations in decline number one especially difficult is the fact that the decline is situated under a glacier. The ongoing ice movement can cause a collapse of roofing, which once did occur. While we were being shown around the decline, operations were underway in a bid to remove the mess of a previous slide. Small rock falling to the bottom of the decline indicates the possibility of a slide. Experts examine the places from which rocks fall and decide whether it's safe to continue work. Thanks to strict compliance with these rules, nobody was injured during the slide. According to the design, both underground shafts are expected to meet under the open pit in 2012, and then underground mining at Kumtor will start.